Hi, Jalen. This is Kyle Goon from um, Southern California News Group. Um, just wondering um, what it's been like um, having, um, you know, all your fellow uh, combine guys at, at, at Clutch and, and what it's been like to train in Southern California. And, and when you did your Sierra Canyon workout last week, um, what did it feel like to have all those, those NBA guys watching you and, and uh, attending courtside to support? Nah, yeah, Pro Day was great. Um, you know, it was set up really, really well. Um, everything was great about it. You know, we just, we were just basically showing, showing the world what we do on a daily basis. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't much anything new for uh, any of us six guys. So, you know, it was great, you know, and to have the support of the fellow, you know, clutch clients, you know, it was great. You know, made, it made you want to, you know, get up a little more, a couple dunks, but, you know, it, it was great overall. Uh, as a quick follow-up, um, you know, the Lakers are in your backyard. A bunch of the clutch clients are on the Lakers. And I know Taylin and Montrez were, were at your workout the other day. Have you felt the presence of the Lakers in, in Southern California while I've been training and, and uh, working out for this draft? Yeah, L.A., you know, it's, it's Laker land out there. You know, every everybody's a Laker fan, it seems like. You know, just kind of everywhere you turn, you see a billboard about the Lakers. So... You know, you kind of you can't you kind of can't miss um, <clears throat> you know the fan support from the Lakers around there. So you know it's been it's been cool seeing that. So sounds like the next question from Sean Coleman. Sean, can you just let us know your affiliation, please? Yeah, Sean Coleman with the uh, Locked On Grizzlies, uh, Locked On Podcast Network. Jalen, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Thank you for asking. I just wanted to ask if you've had any uh, communication with Memphis and in terms of your overall game, certainly seems as if uh, the creativity on offense, just a lot of non scoring outside scoring aspects of your game that really pop out. How do you think those translate to the NBA, the facilitation, the ability to switch, defend, things such as that? Where do you stand and how do you feel that will translate to the NBA? I feel like it's going to translate great, you know. The, the game is, you know, translating. It's, it's moving in that direction of positionless basketball, you know, being able to do multiple things on the court, you know, and I've been doing that pretty much my whole life. So it's only going to get better from here. So I feel like, you know, I'm going to fit in right away uh, with whatever team it may be. Uh, so, yeah. And just as a follow-up, just was wondering if you'd had any communication or uh, interviews work out with the Grizzlies. Yeah, no interviews or uh, communication with the Grizzlies. Uh, Take the next question from Alan Silva. Alan, uh, go ahead and just let us know your affiliation. Hi, right, it's Alan Silva from Costa Rica for PZ Basket. Well, Jalen, when you were younger, did you model your game after any NBA player? And if not, who do you look up for? Uh, you know, growing up, I, re I really didn't, like, you know, specifically model my game after anybody. You know, I always watched LeBron James. I was, you know, just kind of the main guy. You know, I've always been watching my whole life. Uh, but once I got to around like, you know, junior, junior, senior year, sophomore year, you know, I started watching more film on guys, started watching, you know, the Penny Hardways, you know, the, um, the Magic Johnsons, the Ben Simmons, you know, those those bigger guards, you know, that could play make at a very high level. So, you know, uh, been watching them, you know, studying their games uh, pretty much since then. So, yeah. Take the next question from Brian Bearfield. Brian, go ahead and let us know your affiliation. Uh, Brian Barefield with Houston Style Magazine. Uh, what is your biggest strength that you bring into the NBA? I think versatility. Um, and that's just, I know that may seem cliche, but, you know, just the fact that I can, you know, play one through five, I can guard one through five, you know, I think that's, that's going to bring value to a team, you know, and uh, help the team, you know, uh, right away, you know, just being able to move someone like me all around the floor um, and, and being able to do a bunch of things on the offense and defense and, uh, I think that's the most valuable thing, you know, I bring to a team. Thank you. Let's take the next question from Jason Anderson. Jason, go ahead and let us know your affiliation, please. Hi, Jalen. I'm with the Sacramento Bee. Uh, thanks for your time today. Um, I, I wonder, you know, what your, your interactions with the Kings were like. I know you, you worked out for them. Uh, were you encouraged by the feedback? And then kind of a big picture question, Jalen, there, you know, there's this echo chamber about red flags and everything after you leave in Duke. And I just wonder how much you've had to address that uh, with NBA teams and then how you've gone about addressing that. Uh, yeah, no, 
to answer your first part of your question, you know, working out with Sacramento, that was a great workout. Um, they said nothing but positive things. They said I had a great workout. You know, um, just seeing a lot of things that, you know, they improve about my game, you know, from the last time people have seen me. Um, and as far as those red flags, you know, those those really aren't red flags. You know, pe people say a lot of things about me, but they say those things without knowing me. So I don't really pay attention to that. Um, kind of the teams don't even – what what's said on the media, those teams don't even ask or even question character, any of that. So uh, so that's kind of really out of, out of the question. So, so yeah. Okay, thank you. Take like the next question from Mike Vorkanov. Mike, if you want to go ahead and just let us know your affiliation. Hey, Jalen, it's uh, Mike Vorkanov with The Athletic. Um, thanks for doing this, first of all. Uh, second of all, um, I don't know if you've been watching the playoffs at all and, and at the finals, and if you have, um, what have you noticed uh, players at your position doing um, and you think teams want from a player at your position uh, doing to be able to compete and play at a high level? I think, I think defending, you know, that was the main thing, main takeaway I got from this playoffs. You know, you see, you know, I'm from Milwaukee, so, you know, I was watching the Bucks, you know, throughout the whole playoffs, you know, so watching how, how Giannis, you know, how he impacts the game, um, you know, just making winning plays, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. I think the next question from Daniel Bell. Daniel, let us know your affiliation, please. Hey, Jalen, uh, Daniel Bell, Black Sports Online. Uh, I'm just wondering how the draft process has been for you, um, if you had any favorite parts of the draft process and how much you're looking forward to the draft next week. You know, the draft process has been great. You know, I'm just like, very excited, you know, to, for people to see me because um, a lot of people haven't seen me since February, you know. Uh, so I'm excited, you know, just to show how, how much better I've gotten throughout this, this, uh, this pre-draft process, you know. I had a great trainer uh, and Chris Johnson, you know, who's developed my game in a way I, I couldn't even imagine, you know. So um, as far as, you know, just looking forward to the draft, um, that's, that's going to be a big day for me. But, you know, that's just that's just the start of, of my journey. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm going to embrace every moment of it. So, yeah. Take the next question from Isaac Simpson. Isaac, let us know your affiliation, please. Yeah, Isaac Simpson, Hoopball Grizz. Uh, Jalen, thanks for taking my question. Um, are there any current players in, in the NBA that you, you look up to or, or kind of try to take things from and, and, and model your game after? Yeah, LeBron James for sure, you know. Um, uh, you know, just with, every, with everything he does on the court, you know, the way he communicates, the way he leads, you know, his IQ. Uh, ben Simmons too, you know, same thing with him. You know, the bigger – bigger, bigger playmaking guards, you know, and that's kind of, you know, how I envision myself, you know, being that type of player um, in a way. Um, so, yeah. Take the next question from Chase Hughes. Chase, go ahead and let us know your affiliation, please. Hey, man, uh, Chase Hughes, NBC Sports. Um, we talked to you at the Combine and, and you said you had spoken to the Wizards. Uh, I'm wondering if you had any more contact with them and just how do you think you would fit with them if they drafted you there at 15? Uh, I haven't had any more uh, interaction with the, the Wizards, um, you know, uh, how I fit in with the Wizards. You know, I feel like, you know, with, with my versatility and how I play, you know, I feel like I could fit in anywhere. So it's just a matter of how they would use me. Um, I feel like, you know, I'd be be able to embrace it however, however they would. Um, but, you know, whatever happens, happens. Okay, we'll take the next question from Pranav Ramasu, Romanian. Uh, Pranav, go ahead and let us know your affiliation, please. Uh, Pranav, Pranav Ramasu, Sports Network. Thanks for taking my question. Jalen, um, what are teams getting in a player like you? Um, again, and, you know, despite what everybody's saying, they're getting a great kid. Uh, that's, that's one thing. They're getting a great great person, you know, a great teammate, um, again, someone who just wants to win at the end of the day, um, you know, and, and like I said before, you know, as far as on the court, you know, they're getting a versatile player, you know, someone who just wants to win at the end of the day. So, yeah. Thank you. We'll go back to Jason Anderson. Jason. No, I'm good. I think I just didn't put my hand down. Thank okay. You. No problem. Brian, go ahead if you have another question. Me, Brian Bearfield? Yes. 
Yeah. Uh, can you talk about your uh, time being with uh, Coach Trzeszewski and what he meant to you and what he taught you? Yeah, you know, he taught me so much. You know, that was I was one of the first people, who, you know, who believed in my basketball skills before I actually believed in my basketball skills. You know, that's kind of someone who, you know, helped lay out the blueprint for, for my vision, you know, kind of, you know, when they first started recruiting me, you know, my freshman year, um, you know, it didn't seem real. So just kind of, you know, they always believed in me, you know, the impact he had on me, the advice he gave me throughout the year, how hard, how hard he coached me, you know, he's not going to coach somebody. He, he coaches all of his players hard, you know, cause he wants, he wants the best for them at the end of the day. So, you know, I'm extremely thankful for my time that I spent with him, you know, and forever grateful, you know, that I did end up going to Duke at the end of the day. Thank you. Take the next question from Dorothy Gentry. Go ahead, Dorothy. Oh, sorry. Hi, it's Dorothy from Dallas-based iMessenger Media. Uh, what has basketball taught you that carries over uh, into the other areas of your life? And how will we see that play out in the NBA? Um, no, not everything's going to be perfect. That's that's kind of what basketball has taught me. You know, you're not always going to have a great game. You know, in, in life, you're not always going to have a great day. You know, it's about how you bounce from that day. You know, um, you just got to you got to look forward to the next day, you know, try to make the best of every situation possible. Um, and then same with basketball, you know, like I was saying, you know, you're not going to have all the greatest games, the greatest performances, you know, you can control what you can control. Uh, I say that's probably the biggest thing. Um, so, yeah. Take the next question from Juan Baraka. Juan, go ahead. Jalen, how's it going? Uh, Juan Baraka for Salimo in Uruguay. Jalen, do you remember you as a young, young kid uh, trying to make it to the league? How does it feel right now that you're uh, so close to it? Uh, it's, it doesn't seem real, to be honest. Uh, you know, I never, I never imagined, you know, that I'd be in this position, you know. Of course, I always, want, I always had this dream, you know, playing in the NBA. But, you know, you always had teachers, you know, telling you the statistics of how many professional basketball players actually make it to the NBA. Like, so many, so many things, you know, that, you know, that they tried to, you know, ingrain in my head. But just it's, it's crazy, you know, that I'm here. I'm excited, you know. Uh, and it's hard to, kind of hard to tell you how exactly I feel. Uh, it's going to be easy to say uh, next week, you know, when I'm actually at the draft at the Barclays Center, you know. So it's going to be a lot of emotions then. Uh, that's going to be an easier question to answer then than it is now. Um, so, yeah. Take the next question from Chris Fedor. Chris, go ahead. Hey, Jalen, Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com and The Plain Dealer. Thanks for doing this, man. Um, given your situation, because you didn't play as, as many college games as some of these other guys in this draft class, have you approached this pre-draft process as a way to kind of remind these NBA teams of why you were so highly regarded coming out of high school? Yeah, I think the way I've been, I've been killing these workouts, I think, I think, I think they're, they're well reminded, you know, of why I had that. I had that, you know, hype and, you know, that attention, you know, coming into college. So, you know, I've, I, I'm pretty confident these teams, you know, got well reminded throughout this pre-draft process of who I am. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you and best of luck. Thank you. We'll take another question from Daniel Bell. Daniel, go ahead. Hey, Jalen, um, what are some things that you felt like you needed to work on after making the, making the decision to leave Duke? Um, everything. Um, but I say the main thing, you know, that I really dialed in and focused on uh, was my shooting. Um, just making that as consistent as possible. Uh, you came a long way, and you know, just that's why I'm excited for people to, you know, to see me. Um, so uh, they can see the process and the hard work that I've been putting in during this process. Um, so yeah. Chris Fedor, do you have another question? I see your hand is up still. I don't, no, thank you though. Okay. All right, we have a few more minutes with Jalen. So if anyone else has any last questions, please let me know by raising your hand. All right, we got another one from, from Mike Vorkanov. Mike, got it. Uh, Jalen, I, I just want to follow up on something you said um, a few minutes ago. You said, despite what everybody's uh, saying, they're getting a, a great kid. 
do you feel like there's been some kind of um i, I don't know impugning of your character or do you like just not do you not like the way that you've been talked about uh publicly and in the media over the last uh, few months pre-draft yeah, I feel like, yeah, I don't I don't like seeing that stuff, you know, and I know my parents see that stuff and I know it hurts them because at the end of the day, these people are making judgments without knowing me, without speaking to me, without saying a word to me. So, you know, the fact that people are saying I'm a bad character kid, you know, um, over essentially, you know, a decision I made, um, a 19 year old kid made is it, it's kind of crazy at the end of the day. So whoever's saying that, uh, it's, it's just not true. So I'm just excited, you know, to get into the league, you know, to kind of just shine a better, better name or a better light on my name. So, so yeah. Does it actually, has it actually been impacting your parents? You said that they've seen it and it seems to, to have hurt their, their feelings from seeing that about their son. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think it impacts them. You know, it's just like, you know, I know they see it. Um, and I know that's something, you know, any parent wouldn't want to see um, something like that said about their kid. Um, but like I said, people are saying this, people on Twitter, Instagram are saying this without without ever saying a word to me, without speaking to me, just going off of what they heard. So it's very an unfair judgment to make about a about a kid um, without speaking to him. Um, so, yeah. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. All right. We've again, we have a few more minutes with Jalen. So if any other questions, please just raise your hand and we'll let you go ahead. Chris Fedor again. Go ahead. Yeah, Jalen, what's your hope for draft night? Uh, as far as as far as what? Like just as where far as how high you want to go, um, anything you want to happen personally? Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, I don't care about where I get picked. You know, at the end of the day, where I get picked, that's where it's meant to happen, where it's meant to be. You know, I'm just trusting, um, trusting wherever I get picked. You know, I, I know it's a it doesn't matter where you get picked. That's not going to keep you in the league. You know, what's going to keep you in the league is how hard you work from the day you do get drafted. So that's the kind of mindset, you know, I'm having going into the draft. Um, I'm just very grateful to be in this position. Um, so, yeah. Daniel Bell again. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, Jalen. Um, what are your hobbies outside of basketball? Uh, I'd say the biggest one is just spending time with family. Um, I'm a big family guy. Uh, I love my family, um, you know, doing whatever with them, whether it may be going out to eat, going to the mall, uh, going on walk, going on family walks. Uh, you know, that's, that's kind of something, you know, I, I love to do. Um, I got family first, you know, that's, that's, that's tattooed on me. You know, that's just something, you know, I, I really embrace. So, you know, spending time with them is very important to me, especially with these next with my career coming up, uh, I know I may not be able to spend as much time with them. So, you know, that's something, you know, I've enjoyed doing in the past, you know, for sure. Okay, right, let's take the next question from Sean Coleman again. Sean. Hey, Jalen, you had said that the draft process has been a great experience. Has there been anything, you know, obviously you, I'm sure you prepared for it. Has there been anything from a specific team or in general that stood out as being unexpected or that, you know, that you didn't realize would be a part of it, but really stood out that you enjoyed? Um, no, nah, I wouldn't say there's nothing that, you know, that just like, you know, really caught my attention in, in a bad or a good way, you know, these teams and, this, this this process has just been great overall. Um, so yeah.